where it's conscious creation or deliberate creation or law of attraction? Are you one of those people who cringe and dismiss these philosophies as a bunch of hooey or undocumented woo-woo beliefs? If so, you probably aren't alone. But these principles actually were popular long before the release of the documentary, The Secret, in 2006, or before the cast ended up on the Larry King live show um, a few months later. Actually, throughout history, humans have sought to understand the principles of the universe and the power of their minds. It's not surprising because, you know, it's not surprising that, that because of this desire to understand the power of our mind, that the principle of creative thought or deliberate creation gained a lot of traction, um, also known as the law of attraction. Um, the basic idea here is that conscious and intentional thinking allows you to shape your reality and manifest your desires. So let's take a little look at the historical roots of conscious and deliberate creation. This philosophy or principle can be traced all the way back to ancient cultures, such as the, as the Egyptians and the Greeks. Um, the Greeks believed in the power of the mind to influence their world. And the Greek Stoics taught that the mind, or reason specifically, could control emotions and thoughts. And they also believed that deliberate thinking was essential to achieve an inner sense of inner peace and happiness. In the Old Testament, we have King Solomon in Proverbs telling his sons, be careful how you think, your life is shaped by your thoughts. And in the same biblical book, we read, as someone thinks within himself, so he is. Now in Judaism, which I know a little more about, um, we have Rebbe Nachman of Breslov, and I've often quoted him saying, you are where your thoughts are, so be careful what you think. Um, the Hasidic master, Rabbi Menachem Mendel of Lubavitch, um, introduced a Yiddish adage that I can't say, but basically it means think good and it will be good. Then if we go over to Buddhism, Buddha echoed the same beliefs, saying that mind is everything, what you think you become. And Greg Braden writes about uh, Mahayana Buddha Buddhism and, and says that that, that um, this, sect of, I don't know what else to call it, of Buddhism believes that reality can only exist where our mind creates a focus, so focused attention. In um, the Islam, for is, Islam, um, that religion encourages positive and discourages negative thinking, and Muslims are also taught that they're going to get what they hoped for if they're optimistic and hope for the good. They also are told to have faith. Now, the modern concept of deliber deliberate creation gained its promise prominence mostly in the 20th century thanks to the work of new thought and the law of attraction proponents like napoleon hill um, who wrote think and grow rich and esther hicks um, and yeah the, the book the secret propelled um well actually it was a dvd first um kind of propelled this whole idea into po the popular culture, which is why you hear people like Oprah Winfrey and Olympic athletes and famous celebrities and speak speakers talking about, about it. it sometimes you have to listen carefully, but uh, you will hear them talking to how they focus their thoughts, talking about that and how it created results for them. Doctors and scientists and researchers more more recently have proven that our thoughts impact us on various levels, which includes thought influencing our biology. You know, read um, Bruce Lipton's work on the, the biology of belief. And he's a biologist, an epigenetics uh, specialist. But also thoughts, you know, influence how we see ourselves in the world. So I went out and looked for some quotes, some other quotes about creative or deliberate thought just to take a quick look right at at what what's being said and 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 what it means so i'm going to run through this pretty quickly um but uh there's a blog post associated with this post um over at ninaamir.com and you can always um go take a look at what what i wrote there because there'll definitely be uh, more more information than what i'm going to share here anyway 
The first quote is from James Allen, who was an author, and he wrote, our life is what our thoughts make it. A man will find that as he alters his thoughts towards things and other people, things and other people will alter towards him. So basically, Alan is saying that when you change your thoughts about something, your experience of it changes. And not only that, but what you've been thinking about may change. Your thoughts create changes in things external to you, right? So they're impacting something outside of your personal experience. Um, the second quote comes from Henry David Thoreau, and it is, the world is but a canvas to our imagination. I love that. Thoreau's words remind us that we have endless possibilities available to us if we use our imagination, and our imagination involves thought focused on possibilities, right? So we're imagining the possibility of something, and that's where our thoughts are. So we can create anything we desire and shape our reality in any way that we choose by visualizing it. By imagining it. So if you can imagine it, you can make it so. Albert Einstein said something very similar. He said, imagination is everything. It's the preview of life's coming attractions. So like Thoreau, Einstein is telling us that when we what we visualize in our mind with thoughts and pictures and feelings becomes the precursor to what we create. So it's no wonder that there's this whole um, focus in um, positive psychology and in the law of attraction circles on visualizing, imagining what we want to have, right? What we want to manifest. So as we imagine, we focus on specific thoughts, you know, visual scenarios, and that focus brings what we imagine into reality. Um, if you're much of a proponent of um, law of attraction or conscious and deliberate creation, you'll know Ex Esther Hicks, who um, brings through messages of the non-physical group called Abraham. So um, Esther Hicks, or often called Abraham Hicks, says, your thoughts and beliefs of the past have created this moment and all the moments up to this moment. What you're now choosing to believe and think and say will create the next moment and the next day and the next month and the next year. So here we, um, you know, with this quote, uh, she, they're stressing the importance of your thoughts in creating a reality right now and also in the future. She's reminding us that we are creators of our lives and have the power to choose what we want to experience and manifest in this moment, as well as in the days, weeks, and years to come. So what we think now impacts our future. Wayne Dyer, love Wayne Dyer. He said, you manifest what you believe, not what you want. So he's talking about the importance of beliefs and manifesting your desires. And he described beliefs as thoughts you keep thinking. So he's reminding us that wanting something is not enough. We have to believe that we can have it. Um, and that, you know, and, and keep in mind that if your beliefs contradict your desires, you're going to find it challenging to manifest them. Then we have Gabby Bernstein. Gotta love Gabby Bernstein. She says, your thoughts create your reality. Your words reinforce it. She is talking about the power of words and shaping your reality. Most religions and spiritual traditions mention the power of words. In the New Testament, it says in the beginning was the word. In the Jewish uh, tradition known as Kabbalah, words, um, you know, the letters were first used to create the world. In the Old Testament, we have God speaking the world into existence, right? Let there be light and there was light. So thoughts compri are comprised of words, and they're made more powerful when you speak or write them in addition to just thinking about them. And then we have Joe Dispenza. Gotta love Joe. Also, where we put our awareness and for how long maps our destiny. And with this quotation, he's pointing out that our awareness, what we pay attention to or think about, dictates what we create. So if you place your attention on one thought long enough and often enough, you're likely to bring that into your future reality. And then we have Greg, Greg Braden. I love all these people. Manifestation begins with the willingness to make room in our beliefs for something that supposedly doesn't exist. We create that something through the force of consciousness and awareness. So here he is talking, bringing into the discussion the need for faith in the conscious creation process. That You, you have to believe that whatever you want to consciously create 
that you think you can deliberately bring into your experience, you know, you have to think that you have to believe that you can consciously create it. You have to believe or think that you can bring it into your experience, even if you have no proof. And that's what faith is believing in something with no proof. We believe in God with no proof, right? Then when you can re remain committed to keeping that thought at the forefront of your mind, you create that desire, but you have to have that trust. Then we have Bruce Lipton. Bruce Lipton, um, he says the secret of life is belief rather than genes. It is our beliefs that control our lives. Bruce, as I said, is an epi uh, epigenetics expert and a biologist. So we have a scientist here and he's basically reminding us that consistently repeated thoughts become beliefs and that beliefs and thoughts alter things, including yourselves. So he's stressing that we have to create beliefs related to his desires and focus on them, just like everyone else. And that's how you create all aspects of your life, including your health. Last but not least, we have Dawson Church. He says, think deliberately. Use this remarkable gift of consciousness to direct your thoughts rather than being pushed around by reality. I love this final quote. Um, Church is explaining that when we employ the power of conscious and deliberate thinking, we control our reality. In fact, reality changes based on our thoughts. Pretty powerful stuff, right? All these quotes basically emphasize the creative power of our thoughts, our beliefs, our imagination, and these, what I would call well-respected experts, speakers, authors, scientists, academics, researchers, remind us that we are the creators of our reality. We have the power to manifest whatever we desire by harnessing the power of thought. So how do we do that? First, we consciously choose what thoughts to think. Two, we consistently and deliberately place our awareness or attention on those thoughts. And then additionally, we have to have a little bit of faith that the thoughts can change our reality, manifest our desires and create whatever we want in our lives. So I'd love to know whether you believe conscious or deliberate creation can help change you or your life, whether you can actually manifest things using your thoughts or create change based on your thoughts, um, leave me a comment down below this video. Or if you do go over to the blog to read the post, you can um, leave a comment there. I just, I'd like to know. This is um, actually an area of real passion for me, this idea that our thoughts are creative and that um, by consciously and deliberately choosing thoughts and focusing upon them, that we can bring into existence what we desire. So let me know what you think. Maybe you just think I'm crazy. If you don't think I'm crazy, let me tell you this. I am known as the inspiration to creation coach. I am a, an intuitive transformational coach. I'm a certified high performance coach. I offer personal and spiritual growth in my inspired creator community. The link is up above. And I do that because we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And I think we have to deal with the whole person um, in order to create transformation. So if that's of interest to you and you would like to experience transformational coaching, personal and spiritual growth coaching, click on the link above for the Inspired Creator community. Um, I go live there for live coaching um, several times a month. There are additional trainings um, and um, lots of good things and a wonderful community of seekers. And what we're all trying to do is to live human lives that feed our spiritual self, feed our souls. So if that's of interest to you, like I said, click above. I'd be honored to have you join the Inspired Creator community. Until I talk to you next time, go out there and achieve more inspired results. Mm -hmm.